You are your most valuable asset. Your life, your potential, and your possibilities are the most precious things you have. Thus, your great goal in life should be to fulfill that potential and become everything you are capable of becoming. Your ability to learn, grow, and fulfill your potential is unlimited. Today, people are graduating from high school and college in their 70s, learning new subjects and developing new capabilities. Your ability to learn and remember and continue throughout your life if you keep your brain alive, alert, and functioning at its best. Your most precious financial asset is your earning ability. Your ability to work is your primary source of cash throughout your life. You could lose your home, your car, your bank account, or everything you own, but as long as you have your earning ability, you can earn it all back and more in the months and years ahead. Your biggest investment. Most people don't realize this. They take their earning ability for granted. But it has taken you your entire life to develop your earning ability. Every bit of education, experience, and hard work that you have invested in learning your craft and developing your skills has gone into building this asset. Your earning ability is very much like a muscle. It can increase in strength and power year by year as the result of regular exercise. Likewise, the opposite is true too. If left alone or ignored, your earning ability, like your muscles, can become weaker or even decline because you have simply failed to upgrade it continually. In other words, your earning ability can be either an appreciating or a depreciating asset. An appreciating asset is something that grows in a value and cash flow every year as a result of continual investment and improvement. A depreciating asset, on the other hand, is something that loses value over time and finally reaches the point at which it is written off, being of little or no further value. The choice is yours as to whether your earning ability is increasing or decreasing month by month and year by year. See yourself as the president of your own personal services corporation. Imagine that you are going to take your company public on the stock market. Would you recommend your company as a growth stock, continually increasing its value and earning ability each year? Or would you describe your company as one that has leveled off in the marketplace that is not really going anywhere in terms of increased value and income? Would you recommend stock in Hue Inc. as an excellent investment? Why or why not? What got you here won't get you any further. Some people are actually losing value each year, declining in earning ability because they are not continually upgrading their knowledge and skills. They don't realize that whatever knowledge and skill they have today is rapidly becoming obsolete. It's being replaced by new knowledge and skills that if you don't have them and someone else does, you will be in danger of being overtaken by your competition. Join the top 20%. In Chapter 1, I mentioned that the 80-20 rule applies to income. The top 20% of people in our society earn and control 80% of the assets. According to Forbes, Fortune, Business Weekend, Wall Street Journal, and the IRS, by many estimates, the top 1% of Americans control as much as 33% of the asset. The most interesting discovery of income inequality is that most millionaires, multimillionaires, and billionaires in America are first generation. They started with little or nothing and earned all their money by themselves in one lifetime. In America, there's a high level of income mobility which means that you are able to move from the lower levels of income to the upper levels. Almost everyone who is in the top 20% today started in the bottom 20%. From that point, they began to do something different with their time and their lives, and as a result, they put themselves squarely onto the upward escalator of financial success. No limits on your potential. The average income increase in America is about 3% a year just about the same as the rate of inflation and cost of living increases. People whose income is increasing at 3% a year seldom get ahead. They have a job, which can also be thought of as an acronym for just over broke. But the fact is that no one is better than you and no one is smarter than you. If someone is doing better than you are today, it is simply proof that they have learned how the law of cause and effect applies to their work and they have begun doing the things that other successful people have also done. The application of the law of cause and effect to your personal life is 
learn, and do. The achievement of personal excellence is a decision you make or that you fail to make. But in the absence of a commitment to excellence in your chosen field, you automatically default to average performance or even mediocrity. No one becomes excellent accidentally or by just going to work each day. Excellent requires a definite decision and a lifelong commitment. The Keys to the 21st Century Knowledge and skill are the keys to the 21st century. Becoming the best person you can possibly be and moving to the top of your field requires the application and self-discipline throughout your life. Mental fitness is like physical fitness. If you want to achieve either, you must work at it all the time. You can never let up. You must be continually learning and growing every day, week and month throughout your career and in other areas of your life if you're going to join the top 20% and stay there. To earn more, you must learn more. Abraham Lincoln once wrote, The fact that some have become wealthy is proof that others may do it as well. What others have done, you can do as well if you learn how. Everyone who is at the top was once at the bottom. Many people who come from average or poor families with average incomes, or who grow up in average circumstances have gone on to become some of the most prominent people in their fields. And, what hundreds of thousands and even millions of other people have done, you can do as well. The philosopher Bertrand Russell once wrote, The very best proof that something can be done, is that someone else has already done it. Ordinary into Extraordinary Very often you see people who don't seem to be as intelligent or as talented as you are, who are nonetheless accomplishing remarkable things with their lives. There's nothing that will make you angrier than to see someone who seems to be dumber than you, who's doing better than you. How can this be? The answer is simple. At a certain point in their lives, they realized that the key to success was personal and professional growth. It was a dedication to lifelong learning that made them successful. The good news is that almost every important skill is learnable. Every business skill is learnable. Everyone who is proficient in any area of business was at one time completely ignorant in that area. Every sales skill is learnable. Every top salesperson was once a beginning salesperson and unable to make a call or close a sale. All money-making skills are learnable as well. Almost every wealthy person was once poor. You can learn anything you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. Make a decision. The starting point if you're moving upward and onward toward becoming one of the most competent, most respected and highest paid people in your field is simple. Make a decision. It's said that every major change in your life comes about when your mind collides with a new idea and then you make a decision to do something different. You make a decision to complete your education, upgrade your skills, or get into a good college. You make a decision to start a new business. You make a decision to take a particular job or start a particular career. You make a decision to invest your money in a particular way. And especially, you make a decision to be the best in your field. Many people say that they would like to be happy, healthy, thin, and rich. But, as discussed in Chapter 4, wishing and hoping is not enough. You have to make a firm, unequivocal decision that you are going to pay any price and go any distance in order to achieve the goals you have set for yourself. You have to make that decision and then burn your mental bridges behind you. From that moment on, you resolve to continue working on yourself and your craft until you reach the top 20% or beyond. Follow the leaders, not the followers. When you decide to be one of the best people in your field, look around you and identify the people who are already at the top. What characteristics do they have in common? How do they plan and organize their days? How do they dress? How do they walk, talk, and behave with other people? What books do they read? How do they spend their spare time? Who do they associate with? What courses have they taken? What audio programs do they listen to in their cars? These are just a few of the questions you should ask in order to find out what successful people are doing that you might also need to do. After all, you can't hit a target that you can't see. Your selection of the right role models can have an enormous impact on your future. Dr. David McClellan of Harvard and author of The Achieving Society concluded that your choice of a reference group 
and determine as much as 95% of your success and achievement in life. Your reference group is made up of the people who you feel are just like me. Your natural tendency is to adopt the attitudes, styles of dress, opinions and lifestyles of the people with whom you identify and associate most of the time. Fly with the Eagles Some years ago, one of my seminar participants told me his story. Bob Barton said he had started off in his 20s in a large company with about 32 salespeople in his branch. It was his first real job and he was starting at the bottom. Because he was new, he hung around with the other junior salespeople. As they say, birds of a feather flock together. After a month or two, Bob noticed that the top salespeople in the office also associated with each other. They did not spend time with the junior salespeople. They also spent their time differently. When Bob got into work in the morning, the top salespeople were already there, planning their days and working on the telephone and making appointments. Bob also noticed that the junior salespeople would come in later, drink coffee, read the newspaper, and make excuses for not making sales calls. Bob decided that he was going to pattern himself after the top salespeople in the office. He looked at the way they dressed and groomed, and he resolved to dress and groom the way they did. Each morning he would stand in front of his mirror and ask himself, Do I look like one of the top salespeople in my office? If the answer was no, he would go back and change his clothes until he felt that he looked as good as the best people. He began to come into the office and organize his day before 8.30 a.m. so that he was ready to make calls as soon as his customers were available to see him. One day, Bob asked one of the top salespeople if he could recommend a book or audio program that would help him. It turns out that top people are always willing to help other people improve. When he got the recommendation, Bob immediately went out and got the book and sent away for the audio program. He read the book and visited the program, and then reported back to the top salesman. The top salesman gave him some more advice on things to read and listen to, all of which Bob followed. Bob asked another salesperson how he planned his day, and that salesperson showed him his time management system. So Bob began to plan and organize his day the way the top salespeople did it. By using these top salespeople as his role models and emulating them whenever possible, Bob started to make more appointments, see more prospects, and make more sales. Within six months, he was one of the top salespeople in the office as well. By that time, the top salespeople had invited him for coffee and lunch, and he became one of them rather than one of the junior people. The next year, Bob went to the National Sales Conference, where he met a lot of the top people from around the country. He deliberately sought them out and asked for their advice. What books would they suggest? What audio programs would they recommend? What seminars had they attended? What strategies did they find that were the most effective in building their sales business? Bob did something that very few people do. When he received advice, he followed it. He immediately took action on the advice and then reported back to the people who had given it to him. Within four years, Bob became one of the top salespeople in the country. His friends and associates were the other top salespeople in his branch and in the other branches. His income had increased several times. He wore beautiful clothes, drove a new car, lived in a lovely home and had a wonderful wife. And he said that it all came about as a result of asking top salespeople for their input and then following that input and applying it to his sales activities. But here's the kicker. Over and over, the top people, the ones who had been winning the sales awards year after year, told Bob the same thing. He was the first person who had ever come up to them and asked them for advice. No one else had ever sought them out and asked them why they were so successful. The answers have all been found. Here's a great discovery. All the answers have been found. All the routes to success have been discovered. Everything you need to learn to move to the top of your field has already been learned by hundreds and even thousands of other people. And if you ask them for advice, they will give it to you. Successful people will have their phone calls held, cancel other appointments, and put their work aside to help other people to be successful. But you must ask, and then you must follow their advice once they give it to you. If you can't ask them directly, read their books and attend their talks and seminars. Listen to audio programs created by successful people. Sometimes you can send them emails and ask for advice. Learn from the best. 
Set high income as a goal. If your goal is to be in the top 20% of money makers in your field, the first thing you need to do is to find out what the people in the top 20% are earning today. This information is available. Just ask around. Check industry statistics. Go on to Google. You can find this information if you look for it. Once you know the income target at which you are aiming, write it down as your goal. Make a plan to achieve this level of income and work on it every day. Never stop until you reach it. The secret to high income in business and sales is quite simple. Learn and do. By jacking up a car, you improve one notch at a time. Each time you learn and practice a new skill, you ratchet up your earning ability and it locks in. As long as you keep increasing your earning ability, you keep ratcheting up to a higher level from which you seldom decline. Use the 3% formula to invest in yourself. To guarantee your lifelong success, make a decision today to invest 3% of your income back into yourself. This seems to be the magic number for lifelong learning. According to the American Society for Training and Development, this is the percentage that the most profitable 20% of companies in every industry invest in the training and development of their staff. Decide today to invest 3% of your income into yourself in order to make yourself an appreciating asset to continually increase your earning ability. If your annual income goal is $50,000, resolve to invest 3% of that amount, or $1,500, back into yourself each year to maintain and upgrade your knowledge and skills. If your income goal is $100,000, resolve to invest $3,000 per year back into yourself to assure that you reach that level of income. The payoff is extraordinary. I was giving a seminar in Detroit a couple of years ago when a young man about 30 years old came up to me at the break. He told me that he had first come to my seminar and heard my 3% rule about 10 years ago. At that time, he had dropped out of college, was living at home, driving an old car, and earning about $20,000 a year as an office-to-office -office salesman. He decided after the seminar that he was going to apply the 3% rule to himself. And he did so immediately. He calculated 3% of his income of $20,000 would be $600. He began to buy sales books and read them every day. He invested in two audio learning programs on sales and time management. He took one sales seminar. He invested the entire $600 in himself in learning to become better. That year his income went from $20,000 to $30,000, an increase of 50%. He said he could trace the increase with great accuracy to the things he had learned and applied from the books he had read and the audio programs he had listened to. For the following year, he invested 3% of $30,000, a total of $900 back into himself. That year, his income jumped from $30,000 to $50,000. He began to think, if my income goes up at 50% per year by investing 3% back into myself, what would happen if I invested 5%? The next year, he invested 5% of his income, $2,500, into his learning program. He took more seminars, traveled across country to a conference, bought more audio and video learning programs, and even hired a part-time coach. And that year, his income doubled to $100,000. After that, by playing Texas Hold'em, he decided to go all in and raise his investment into himself to 10% per year. He told me that he'd been doing this ever since. I asked him, how has investing 10% of your income back into yourself affected your income? He smiled and said, I passed a million dollars in personal income last year, and I still invest 10% of my income in myself every single year. I said, wow, that's a lot of money. How do you manage to spend that much money on personal development? He said, it's hard. I had to start spending money on myself in January in order to invest it all by the end of the year. I have an image coach, a sales coach, and a speaking coach. I have a large library in my home with every book, audio program, and video program on sales and personal success I can find. I attend conferences both nationally and internationally in my field. And my income keeps going up every year. There are three simple steps to become the best. Becoming one of the top people in your field requires discipline and application more than anything else. There are three simple steps that you can follow to become the very best in your field. 1. 
Read 60 minutes in your field each day. Turn off the television and the radio. Put aside the newspaper and read material about your field for one hour each day before you start working. 2. Listen to educational audio programs in your car. Start them and stop them as you listen so that you can reflect on what you have just heard and think about how you can apply the ideas to your work. 3. Attend courses and seminars in your field regularly. Seek them out. Take online courses in the convenience of your own home. Courses that enable you to upgrade your skills and give you important ideas that you can use to be even more successful. The power of compound learning like compound interest is quite amazing. The more you learn, the more you can learn. The more you learn, the better your brain functions and the smarter you get. Your memory and retention rate improves. The more you learn, the more relationships you find between something you learned at one time and something you learned at another time. Never stop learning and growing. The Achievement of Mastery How long does it take to achieve mastery in your field? According to the experts, the acquisition of mastery requires about 7 years or 10,000 hours of hard work. It takes 7 years to become a master salesperson. It takes 7 years to become a successful business person. It takes 7 years to become an excellent diesel mechanic. It takes 7 years to become an excellent brain surgeon. It seems to take 7 years or 10,000 hours of hard work to get to the top of any field. So, you might as well get started. The time is going to pass anyway. The starting point of your achieving mastery is for you to commit to excellence. I've never met a person who made a decision to get into the top 20% in their field who did not eventually achieve it. And I never met a person who got there having not made that decision. Making the decision and then following up with continuous, purposeful, disciplined action is essential. Talent is not enough. As I mentioned earlier, according to Jeffrey Colvin in his best-selling book, Talent is Overrated, most people learn how to do their job in the first year, and then they never get any better. They just coast in their jobs. But the only direction you can coast is downhill. Many people will work away at a job for many years and never rise above the average. They will do their job from 8 to 5, but they never lift a finger to upgrade their skills. They will not invest any time learning their craft unless their company pays for the extra training and gives them the time off to take it. The average person does only an average job. And as a result, he earns an average income and worries about money all his life. He never realizes that often there is only a thin veil that separates the average person from the excellent person. Fact is that if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. No one stays in the same place for long. Two hours each day will get you to the top. It's been calculated that all you need to invest is about two extra hours per day to move from the average to the superior. Only two extra hours each day will move you from worrying about money all your life to being one of the highest paid people in your field. People immediately ask, where am I going to get an extra two hours each day? It's simple. Take a piece of paper and do the following simple calculation. Calculate the number of hours in a week. Seven days times 24 hours equals 168 hours. If you deduct 40 hours for work and 56 hours for sleep, you have 72 hours left over. If you deduct 3 hours per day, 21 hours for getting ready for and traveling to and from work, that leaves you 51 hours of spare time to do with as you please. If you invest 2 hours per day back into yourself, 14 hours per week, you still have 37 hours left over. That's an average of more than 5 hours per day of free time. All you need to do is devote two hours each day to move you from average performance to superior performance at whatever you choose to do. Form the habit of continuous learning. The best news is that when you begin reading in personal or professional development literature, listening to audio programs in your car, taking additional courses and upgrading your skills in the evenings and on the weekends rather than watching television, you soon get into the habit of continuous learning. In no time at all, it will become automatic and easy for you to learn, grow, and upgrade your skills every day and every week. 
The average adult watches about five hours of television each day. For some people, it is seven or eight hours. They turn on the television first thing in the morning and watch it till they leave for work. They turn it back on as soon as they get home from work. They then watch television until 11 or 12 o'clock at night, going to bed without enough time to get a good night's sleep. They then get up in the morning, drink coffee and watch television for as long as they can before they go off to work once more. You can be rich or poor. It's your decision. Your television set can make you rich or poor. If you watch it all the time, it will make you poor. Psychologists have shown that the more television you watch, the lower are your levels of energy and self-esteem. At an unconscious level, you don't like or respect yourself as much if you sit there hour after hour watching television. People who watch too much television also gain weight and become physically unfit from sitting around too much. Your television can also make you rich, but only if you turn it off. When you turn off your television, you free up time that you can then use to invest in becoming a better, smarter, or more competent person. When you leave your television off when you are with your family, you'll find yourself talking, sharing, communicating, and laughing more often. When you leave your television off for extended periods of time, you break the habit of watching television, and you'll hardly miss it at all. Your television can be an excellent servant, but it's a terrible master. The choice is yours. Increase your income 1,000%. There is a simple seven-step formula you can use in order to increase your productivity, performance, and output, and income by 1,000% over the next 10 years. It works for everyone who tries it. It's simple. First, answer this question. Is it possible for you to increase your overall productivity, performance, and output by one-tenth of one percent, just one one-thousandth, in an entire working day? Your answer would probably be yes. If you were to manage your time a little better and work on more valuable tasks, you would quite easily increase your output by one one-thousandth in a day. Having done this for the first day, could you increase your output by one-tenth of one percent the second day? And the answer, of course, is yes. Having increased your performance by one-tenth of one percent on Monday and Tuesday, could you continue to do this for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? And again, the answer is yes. One-half of one percent per week. One-tenth of one percent times five days per week equals one-half of one percent per week. Is it possible for a normal, intelligent, hard-working individual to increase his or her output by one-half of one percent or one two-hundredth in a single week? Of course it is. Having done this for the first week, could you keep up the same pace of personal development the second week? Of course you could. Could you get one one-thousandth of one percent better five days a week for an entire month? You could. This means that you would be one-half of one percent better per week multiplied times 4, or 2% more productive in an entire month. For 13 four-week months in a year, or times 13 equals 52, having become 2% better in a month, could you repeat that in the second month, in the third month, fourth month, and so on? Of course you could. By working on yourself a little bit each day, learning new skills, getting better at your key tasks, setting priorities, and focusing on higher value activities, you can become 26% more productive over the course of an entire year. Having achieved this goal for the first year, could you do it for the second year and then the third? Could you keep it up for 10 years? And the answer, of course, is yes. And the best news is that when you continue to work on yourself, it becomes easier and easier for you to get better and better as the weeks and months go by. By the law of accumulation, with the law of incremental improvement, by the end of 12 months, you would be 26% better. If you continue to improve at 26% per year, by the end of 10 years with compounding, you could be 1,004% more productive. Your income would increase at the same rate. This formula works if you do. There are seven steps in the 1,000% formula. Step 1. Arise two hours before your first appointment or before you have to be at work. Invest the first hour in yourself by reading something educational, motivational, or spiritual. As Henry Ward Beecher once said, the first hour is the rudder of the day. When you get up and invest the first hour in yourself, you 
Set yourself up mentally to have an excellent day. You'll be more positive, alert, creative, and productive all day long when you start your day by investing the first hour in yourself. If you read in your field one hour per day, that will translate into about one book per week. One book per week will translate into about 50 books per year. Since the average adult reads less than one nonfiction book per year, if you were to read 50 books in your field each year, do you think that would give you an edge in your profession? Do you think that it would move you ahead of virtually everyone else in your business? Of course it would. If you read 50 books per year for 10 years, this would be 500 books that would help you to improve your productivity, performance, and income. At the very least, you would need a bigger house just to hold your books, and you'd be able to afford it. Weeding one hour per day in your field will make you a national authority in three to five years. This alone can give you your thousand percent increase over the course of your career. Step 2. Rewrite your goals every day. Get a spiral notebook and rewrite your major goals in the present tense every morning before you start out, without looking back at what you wrote the previous day. This writing and rewriting is the process of programming instructions into the guidance mechanism of your mind. When you rewrite your 10 goals each morning, you'll continually see and think of opportunities to achieve those goals all day long. You'll become more focused, channel, directed. You'll be more purposeful and determined. And you'll achieve your goals much faster than if they were merely wishes floating around in the back of your mind. Writing and rewriting your goals each day can give you your 1,000% increase in income over 10 years. Step 3. Plan every day in advance. Make a list and set priorities on your work before you start off. Your ability to set priorities and to choose the most important thing that you could be doing at every moment is the key to organizing your life and doubling your productivity. We'll talk in detail about time management techniques in Chapter 12. Working on your top priorities can increase your income by 1,000% over 10 years and it is probably impossible to achieve without it. Step 4. Discipline yourself to concentrate single-mindedly on one thing. Choose the most important thing that you can do each day. Then, start on it first thing and work on it until it's 100% complete. Your ability to focus and concentrate when you develop and hone it into a habit all by itself will enable you to double your productivity performance and output in the next month. And it will give you your 1,000% increase over 10 years. Step 5. Listen to educational audio programs in your car. The average business person who drives spends 500 to 1,000 hours per year behind the wheel of their car. When you turn your car into a university on wheels, a mobile classroom, you get the educational equivalent of one to two full-time university semesters as you drive around. Many people have gone from rags to riches by simply listening to educational audio programs in their cars as they drive from place to place. You could do the same. This alone could give you your 1,000% increase. Step number six. Ask two magic questions after every call or event. First, ask yourself, what did I do right? Then, ask yourself, what would I do differently? The first question, what did I do right, forces you to think through and recall all the correct things that you did in that last meeting, presentation, or event, even if it was not successful. Write them down. The second question, what would I do differently, forces you to think through all the different ways you could improve your performance in a similar situation. Write these ideas down as well. In both cases, by reviewing your performance by thinking about what you did right and what you would do differently, you program yourself to perform even better the next time. This is one of the fastest and most powerful exercises in personal growth and development I have ever discovered. This process dramatically speeds up the rate at which you move into the top 20%. Step 7. Treat every person you meet like a million dollar customer. Treat each person you meet and work with both at home and in the office as though he or she is the most important person in the world. When you treat people as if they are valuable and important, they will return the favor by treating you as if you are valuable and important as well. They will want to be associated with you.
work for you, buy from you, and introduce you to their friends. You begin treating people like million dollar customers by starting at home with the members of your family. Remember, they are the most important people in your life. So when you start your day well first thing in the morning by making the members of your family feel important and telling them that you love them, you'll be more positive, relaxed, and happier for the rest of the day. Only 85% of your success will be determined by how much people like and respect you, especially in business and sales. Never miss an opportunity to treat people well. When you practice these seven steps each day for a month, you will see changes and improvements in your life, work, and income that will astonish you. After a month of regular practice, you'll have formed a new habit of continuous personal improvement that can carry you onward and upward for the rest of your life. Be the best. Lifelong personal development and the commitment to personal excellence requires tremendous dedication, discipline, and willpower. The greatest payoff is that every time you learn and apply something new, your brain releases endorphin, which make you feel happier and more excited about your future. Every time you learn and apply something new, you'll have a greater sense of personal power. Your self-esteem, self-respect, and personal pride will increase. You'll feel very much in control of your earned ability, which is one of the most important parts of your life. Imagine that you were going to take a long trip across the country. The first thing you would do would be to choose your destination and then get a road map to determine the very best way to get there. Each day before you started out, you would locate yourself on a map relative to where you are and where you plan to go in the hours ahead. Life is very much the same. Once you have decided upon your values, vision, mission, purpose, and goals, the next step is for you to analyze your starting point. Exactly where are you today, and how are you doing in each of the important areas of your life, especially as they relate to your goals? Jack Welch, CEO of General Electric for many years, once said that the most important quality of leadership is the reality principle. He defined this as the ability to see the world as it really is, not as you wish it were. You would begin every meeting to discuss a goal or a problem with the question, what's the reality? Peter Drucker refers to this quality as intellectual honesty, dealing with the facts exactly as they are before attempting to solve a problem or make a decision. Abraham Maslow once wrote that the first quality of the self-actualizing person was the ability to be completely honest and objective with himself or herself. It is the same with you. If you want to be the best you can be and to achieve what is truly possible for you, you must be brutally honest with yourself and your point of departure. You must sit down and analyze yourself in detail to decide exactly where you are today in each area. For example, if you decided to lose weight, the very first thing you would do is to weigh yourself to determine how much you weigh today. From that on, you continually use the weight as your measure for whether or not you are making progress in weight reduction. If you decide to begin a personal exercise program, the first thing you do is to determine how much you are exercising today. How many minutes per day and per week are you exercising, and how intensely each time? What kind of exercises are you doing? Whatever your answer, it is important that you be as accurate as you possibly can. You then use this answer as a starting point and make your exercise plans for the future based on it. If you want to earn more money, the first thing you do is sit down and determine exactly how much you are earning right now. How much did you earn last year and the year before? How much will you earn this year? How much are you earning each month? The best measure of all is for you to determine how much you are earning each hour right now. You can determine your hourly rate by dividing your annual income by 2000, the approximate number of hours that you work each year. Even better, you can divide your monthly income by 172, the number of hours you work on average each month. Many of my coaching clients calculate their hourly rate each week and compare it against previous weeks. They then set a goal to increase the value of what they do each hour so as to increase the amount they earn each hour on a go-forward basis. You should do the same. The tighter and more accurate your calculations regarding your income or any other area, the better and faster you can improve in each one of them. For example, the average person thinks in terms of monthly and annual salary. This is hard to analyze and increase. Conversely, the high performer thinks in terms of an hourly rate, which is amenable to improvements on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. Since you are the president of your own personal services corporation, you should view yourself as being on your own payroll. But imagine you are paying yourself by the hour. Be just as demanding on yourself as you would be on someone else who is working for you. Refuse to do anything that doesn't pay your desired hourly rate. If you have set a long-term financial goal, the next step is for you to determine exactly how much you are worth today in financial terms. 
If your goal is to become a millionaire in the years ahead, you must calculate exactly how much you have accumulated as of today's date. Most people are confused or dishonest about this calculation. Your true dollar net worth is the amount that you would have left over if you sold everything you own today at what the market would pay and then paid off all your bills prior to leaving the country. Many people place a high value on their personal possessions. They think that their clothes, cars, furniture, and electronics are worth a lot of money. But the true value of these items is usually not more than 10% or 20% of what you pay, and sometimes less. For accurate financial planning, calculate your net worth today and then draw a line from that point to your long-term financial goal. Divide the line by the number of years you intend to spend to achieve the financial goal. In this way, you will know exactly how much you have to save, invest, and accumulate each year in order to become financially independent. Is your goal realistic based on where you are today and the time that you have allocated to get to where you want to go? If your goal is not realistic, force yourself to be completely honest and revise both your calculations and your projections. When you begin to plan your long-term future, one of the most valuable exercises you can engage in is called zero-based thinking. In zero-based thinking, you ask this question, knowing what I now know is, is there anything that I am doing today that I wouldn't start up again today if I had to do it over, knowing what I now know? No matter who you are or what you are doing, there are certain things in your life that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't get into again today if you had them to do over. It is difficult, if not impossible, for you to make progress in your life if you allow yourself to be held back by decisions you have made in the past. If there is something in your life that you wouldn't get into again today, your next question is, how do I get out and how fast? Apply zero-based thinking to the people in your life, both business and personal. Is there any relationship in your life that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't get into? Is there any person that you have hired, assigned, or promoted that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't hire back again today? Is there any person that you are working with or for that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't get involved with again today? Be perfectly honest with yourself when you ask and answer these questions. Examine every aspect of your work life and career. Is there any job that you have taken on that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't get into? Is there any part of your business or work that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't start up again? Is there any activity, process, product, service, or expenditure in your business that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't embark upon again today if you had to do it over? After people and work considerations, look at your investments. Is there any investment of time, money, or emotion that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't get into again today if you had to do it over? If the answer is no, how do you get out and how fast? I have a good friend who was a golfer in high school and university. As a bachelor, he played golf several times a week. He organized his entire life around golf, even flying south in the winter to golf courses that had no snow on them. Over time, he started and built a business, got married, and had children, but he was still locked into the idea of playing golf several times a week. Eventually, the enormous time commitment of playing golf began to affect his business, his married life, and his relationship with his children. When the stress became too great, he sat down and zero-based his activities. He realized that, knowing what he now knew in his current situation, golf would have to be cut back dramatically if he was going to achieve other things in his life that were now more important. By reducing his golfing time, he got his whole life back into balance in just a few weeks. How might this principle applies to you? What time-consuming activities should you reduce or eliminate? Fully 70% of the decisions that you make will turn out to be wrong in the fullness of time. When you made the decision or commitment, it was probably a good idea based on the circumstances of the moment. But now the situation may have changed, and it is time to zero-base it based on the way things are today. You can usually tell if you are in a zero-based thinking situation because of the stress that it causes. Whenever you are involved in something that, knowing what you now know, you wouldn't get into, you experience ongoing stress, aggravation, irritation, and anger. Sometimes people spend an enormous amount of time trying to make a business or personal relationship succeed. But if you zero-base this relationship, the correct solution is often to get out of the relationship altogether. The only real question is whether or not you have the courage to admit that you were wrong and take the necessary steps to correct the situation. If you want to earn a certain amount of money, ask yourself, why am I not earning this amount of money already? What is holding you back? What is the major reason that you are not already earning what you want to earn? Again, you must be perfectly honest with yourself. Look around you and identify people who are earning the kind of money that you want to earn. What are they doing differently from you? What special skills and abilities have they developed that you have not yet developed? What skills and abilities do you need to acquire if you want to earn the same kind of money they are earning? If you are not sure, go and ask them. Find out. This is too important for guesswork or chance.
Do a skills inventory on yourself. First, identify the key result areas of your work. These are the tasks that you absolutely, positively have to fulfill in an excellent fashion in order to do your job well. What are they? In every job, there are seldom more than five to seven key result areas. These are critical tasks you must be excellent at each one of them in order to do the whole job for which you are paid. You must be good at every one of these tasks if you want to earn the kind of money that you are capable of earning. Here is an important discovery. Your weakest key skill sets the height at which you can use all your other skills. Your weakest key result area, wherever it is, determines your income in your field. You can be absolutely excellent at everything except for one key skill, and that skill will hold you back every step of the way. In what area, at which skill, are you the very best at what you do? What particular skill or combination of skills is responsible for your success in your career today? What is it that you do as well or better than anyone else? Once you have answered these questions, you then look at yourself in the mirror and ask, What are my weakest skill areas? Where are you below average or poor? What is it that you do poorly that interferes with your ability to use your other skills? What is it that you do poorly that other people do better than you? Especially what key skills do you lack that are essential for your success? Whatever they are, you need to identify them accurately and honestly and then make a plan to improve in each area. We will discuss these in depth in a later chapter. When you embark on the achievement of any great goal, you should imagine that at any time you could start your career over again. Never allow yourself to feel locked in or trapped by a particular decision from the past. Keep focused on the future. Many people today are walking away from their educations, their businesses, their industries, and their years of experience to get into something completely new and different. They are honest enough to recognize that there is a limited future in the direction they are going, and they are determined to get into something where the future possibilities are far greater. You must do the same. In doing a baseline assessment of yourself and your life, you must face the facts, wherever they are. As Harold Janine of ITT once said, facts don't lie. Seek out the real facts, not the obvious facts, the apparent facts, the hope for facts, or the wished for facts. The true facts are what you need to make good decisions. Take a hard look at your current company and industry. Take a hard look at your current job situation. Take a hard look at your market relative to your competitors. In reinventing yourself, stand back and think about starting your career over again today, knowing what you now know. Imagine that your job and your industry disappeared overnight. Imagine that you had to make brand new career choices. If you were starting over again today with your special combination of talents and skills, what would you choose to do that is different from what you are doing now? Your most valuable financial asset is your earning ability. It is your ability to apply your talents and skills in the marketplace to earn money. In reality, you could lose your home, your car, your bank account, and your furniture and be left with nothing but the clothes on your back. But as long as your earning ability was intact, you could walk across the street and begin generating a good living almost immediately. Your earning ability is extremely precious to you, and your earning ability can be either an appreciating asset or a depreciating asset. Your earning ability can grow in value if you continue to invest in it and develop it. It can decline in value if you begin to take it for granted and start to coast on the basis of what you have done in the past. See yourself as a bundle of resources capable of doing many different things. You have a wide variety of skills, abilities, knowledge, talents, education, and experience. There are many jobs and tasks that you could do or learn to do extremely well. Never allow yourself to get locked into a particular course of action especially if you are not happy with the way things are going today. In mentally starting over as though you were beginning your career anew, look deeply into yourself as well. What good habits do you have that are helping you and moving you toward your goals? What bad habits have you developed that may be holding you back? What are your very best qualities of character and personality? What are your weakest qualities? What new habits and qualities do you need to develop to get the very most out of yourself? And what is your plan to begin developing them? What bad habits do you need to get rid of and replace with good habits? Jim Collins, in his best-selling business book, Good to Great, says that you must be willing to ask the brutal questions of yourself and your business if you are going to identify and remove the obstacles that are preventing you from moving ahead. What are some of the brutal questions that you have to ask yourself before you launch wholeheartedly toward your goals? Whenever I do strategic planning for a company, we start off the session with four questions. First, where are we now? We gather data and information from every part of the company to develop a crystal clear picture of our starting point especially with regard to sales, market position, and profitability. Second, we ask, where would we ideally like to be in the future? We idealize and practice future orientation. We imagine that we can make the company into anything we like in the years ahead and create a perfect vision of what the company would look like if we were successful in every respect. The third question we ask is, how do we get to where we are today? What did we do right? 
What would we do differently? What have been our biggest successes so far, and why did they occur? What have we failed at, and what were the reasons for it? As George Santayana wrote, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. The fourth question we ask and answer is always, what do we do now to get from where we are to where we want to go? Based on our experience, what should we be doing more of or less of? What should we start doing that we are not doing today? What should we stop doing altogether? The good news is that if we have answered the first three questions accurately, the strategic plan or blueprint comes together more easily than if we were trying to plan without being clear about where we were or how we got there. There is an old saying, well begun is half done. Doctors say accurate diagnosis is half the cure. Taking the time to honestly evaluate each part of your situation before you launch toward your goal will save you months and even years on your journey. In many cases, it will force you to reevaluate your goals in the light of superior analysis and knowledge. It will dramatically improve the speed at which you achieve your goals once you get going. One of the words that destroys everything is called neglect. Neglect and I found this out. A week of neglect could cost you a year of repair. Here's the list of attitude diseases. Number one is indifference. The shrug of the shoulder, the guy's not even concerned. He's just drifting. Well, to be any kind of winner, you've got to get worked up. There's one problem with drift. You cannot drift to the top of the mountain. A life full of adventure is a life full of many decisions. The ones that turn out to be wrong give you better experience to make better decisions. So don't see how many decisions you can get out of. See how many decisions you can get out of. See how many you can get into. That's where the adventure is. So shake off this disease, indecision. The next one is doubt, and one of the worst is self-doubt. The guy doubts himself, doubts if it'll last that long for him, doubts if he can do that well, Doubts if he can make that much. Doubts if he can make that much. Doubts if he can accomplish all that. So here's the key. Turn this coin over and become a believer. And there are many things to leave in. One of the majors is yourself. Now for those three, don't get you. This one will. Worry. That's a devastating disease. Worry causes health problems, social problems, personal problems, family problems. I used to have it bad. I used to be known as a super warrior. Not a super warrior. Not a super warrior. No, a uh, super warrior. My advice to you is, do what I finally did on worry. Give it up. I'm not saying it's easy. It took me almost one year to kick the worry habit, and it was not an easy year. I learned how to do it, and you can... Here's the next attitude disease. Over caution. Now you can also be too reckless, but you can also be too cautious. And my caution was always the risk. Risk used to drive me right up the wall. Then I'll tell you what changed my whole life. When I finally discovered it's all risky. The minute you were born, it got risky. The Englishman says, well, if that's the way it's going to work out, let's give it a go. Right, that's what it's for. Give it a go. Somebody says, yeah, but I'm looking for safety and security. Fine, then huddle in a corner, we'll cover you with a sheet, bring you three meals a day, and we'll protect you. Feed you, look after you, care for you, care for you, care for you. The guy said, yeah, I'd live to be 100. But what a way to live, right? What a way to live, safe and secure. And see, it's not important how long you live. What's important is how you live. Here's the next attitude disease. We're almost through this monthly list. The poor pessimist leads an ugly life. He doesn't try to figure out what's right. He tries to figure out what's wrong. He doesn't look for virtue. He looks for faults. To the pessimist, the glass is always half empty. To the optimist, the glass is half full. Quiet with the same measure affects people. 
two different ways. I answered, it all depends on how you look at it. Our lives are mostly affected by the way we think things are, not the way they are. The way we think they are affects us the most. Kids ask good questions these days. One of them said to me, Mr. Bowen, how do you build a good life? I said, it's simple, but it's not easy. Here's how you build anything. Select the right ingredients, keep out the wrong ingredients, and it starts with thought. I asked the kids, what would happen if somebody dropped sugar in my coffee? They said, well, you'd be okay. I said, what if somebody dropped strike nine in my coffee? They said, well, you'd be dead. I said, correct lesson one. Life is both sugar and strike nine. You've got to be careful. I said, what if my worst enemy drops in the sugar? They said, well, you'd be okay. I said, what if my best friend, even by accident, drops in the strike nine? They said, well, you'd be dead. I said, correct lesson two. Watch your coffee. You've got to be careful. See, it doesn't matter whose hands you get the bad stuff from. It doesn't matter where you get the bad stuff. It will still do its damage. On your bank account, wherever you get it. Complaining, crying, griping. Why do some people do so well in life while so many others don't? It's a deadly disease. It's how we feel about life that will decide how life feels about life feels about us. If we think we're going to fail, we might not even thrive. We are more likely to succeed in life if we have a positive I can do it attitude than if we have a negative I can attitude. So attitude is the magic word that can change our lives. It's up to us to have a good attitude about life and all the problems it brings. Before we talk about our attitude toward the world, it's important to discuss our attitude toward ourselves. We tend to minimize our own abilities and the goals we can achieve. We also tend to believe that others can accomplish things in our field that we cannot. As a result of this defensive, doubtful attitude toward ourselves, many people live narrow, darkened, and frustrated lives. However, those who stay young all their lives not only welcome change, but see it for what it really is. A new opportunity, a chance for further fulfillment. Attitude is a reflection of a person's will, and it's incalculably powerful. It can bring about marvelous results for us, but we need to train it patiently day by day. Successful people who constitute the top 5% of individuals who go from one success to another, successful people have a particular kind of attitude towards themselves and life that sets them apart from the rest. They possess a strong belief in their ability to accomplish what they set out to do, and they approach life with a healthy and positive attitude. Successful people possess an attitude towards themselves that is characterized by healthy self-esteem, confidence, and a positive outlook. They also have a healthy attitude towards failure, seeing it as an opportunity to learn and improve rather than a setback. One of the remarkable things about successful people is that they come to be called successful, outstanding, brilliant, lucky, and a host of other accolades. Even though they are not necessarily more intelligent or outstanding than the people around them, they're unwavering in their ability to succeed. Healthy self-esteem and a positive outlook set them apart from the rest. They see failure as an opportunity to learn and grow and obstacles as opportunities to overcome. By developing the right attitude towards themselves and life, anyone can achieve success and live their best life. The importance of attitude cannot be overstated. People who are successful regardless of their field or background all have one thing in common. The right attitude they expect more good out of life than bad, and they expect to succeed more than they fail. This mindset makes them resilient to failures and setbacks. The world we live in is impersonal and does not care whether we change or not. However, adopting a good, healthy attitude towards life can make a huge difference in our lives. By adopting a successful attitude, we can achieve our goals and lead a fulfilling life. It doesn't matter how good your attitude has been in the past. There's always room for improvement. Small refinements upon something already good can make it great. So here's the test. For the next 30 days, act towards the world. Everything and everyone with whom you come in contact with the attitude that represents the kind of results you want to achieve. For instance, if you want to be more successful in what you're doing, act as though you are already in possession of the success you see. If you want others to treat you with admiration and respect, treat others with admiration and respect first. You may not have realized it, but every person you interact with also believes that they are the most important person in the world. 
This is true for every human being on earth. So, for the next 30 days, try treating every person you come across as if they are the most important person in the world. Treating everyone in this way is important not only because it is the right way to treat others, but also because it can help you form a habit that will bring you amazing and delightful results for the rest of your life. When you treat others with respect and kindness, you are likely to receive the same treatment in return. This can lead to better relationships, improved communication, and ultimately more happiness and success in your personal and professional life. Success is not just about personal achievement, but also about the relationships and connections they make along the way. When you have a positive attitude, people are naturally drawn to you. So for the next 30 days, make a conscious effort to treat others with the same kindness and respect that you want to be treated with. The key here is to approach each interaction with a positive mindset. Instead of focusing on what you can get out of the interaction, focus on what you can give. Remember, a good attitude is not something you have to be born with. It's something that can be developed through conscious effort and practice. You would recognize that when a person consistently acts with a positive and productive attitude, they have already placed themselves on the path to success. You would know that this kind of attitude places a person in the top 5% of individuals in any country. Similarly, before building a structure, the excavation and foundation must be laid. In order to achieve the kind of life a person wants, they must become the kind of individual they wish to be. They must think, act, talk, walk, and conduct themselves in all their affairs as the person they wish to become. Once a person becomes that individual, the things that person would have and do will naturally come to them almost immediately. Irritations that used to frustrate and annoy will disappear. When someone gives them a hard time, they will stay on track and not let the negative behavior affect them. By acting with a positive attitude, a person separates themselves from this negative group and begins to attract positive experiences and people into their lives. It's a universal truth that every human being has a deep-seated desire to feel valued and important. This need is not restricted to any particular gender or age group, but rather it is a fundamental need that every individual has from the time we are born. We crave attention and affection from those around us, and this need only intensifies as we grow older. On the other hand, when someone treats you with respect and kindness, acknowledges your efforts, and makes you feel important, it feels great, doesn't it? This is a feeling that we all crave and seek in our personal and professional relationships. Can you guess what's the most important quality to predict success and happiness in life? It's optimism. What they found was that successful people had really high levels of optimism. They were really optimistic. They were positive most of the time. Does that mean they didn't have problems? Oh, they had far more problems than the average person because they tried more things. They found that optimists had two great qualities which led to their success. Number one was they tried more things because they had an unrealistic expectation that they would be successful. They just kind of believed they would be successful. Yeah, they believed that if they just kept on, they would be successful. So they tried more things. Now the second quality they had is they persisted more because they had an unrealistic expectation that if they just persisted more, they'd succeed. What optimists have is what I call orientations. And the first orientation that optimists had is future orientation. They think about where they're going most of the time. They think about the Pideling most of the time. They think about the possibilities of the future. And they idealize. There are four areas where optimists idealize. Number one is great health. We want to have great health. We want to have great health. We want to feel good about ourselves. We want to have high levels of energy. Number two is that optimists want to have loving relationships. They want to have happy relationships. They want to have happy families. They want to have happy friends. They want to have happy friends. They want to have work with people they like, work for bosses they like. Well, the third thing that we all want is we all want to do meaningful work. And we don't want to do it poorly. It's so important for us to do our work well. Because this is what we found is how much you like yourself. Your level of self-esteem determines your level of optimism. People with high self-esteem set big goals for themselves. The starting point of achieving or dreaming great dreams is to have a fantasy or an imaginary idea of your life as if it were perfect sometime in the future. 
If your life was perfect in five years, what would it look like? What would it look like? Well, here's my favorite word in success. My favorite word in success is the word clarity. What I say is, you can't hit a target that you can't see. So your job is to be absolutely clear. If you had the power to achieve anything, if you could wave a magic wand over your life and have three wishes, what three wishes would you want? Health, happiness, money, financial independence. If you could dream it, you can do it. If you can write it down, if you can write it down, if you can imagine it and write it down. Then the only question you ask is you say, how do we do it now? Who else has got what I want and who else one time didn't have it and now they have it? And what you do is you go and find out how they got there. You read their books, you ask them questions, you listen to their programs, and then you discipline yourself to do the same things they did until you get the same result. Number four is financial independence. Now, we all judge ourselves in life by how well we're doing on each of these four. And we could be doing well in three, but if we're low in four, that's what bothers us. Now, the second part, the second part, the second orientation that successful people have is goal orientation. Goal orientation means that they have very clear written goals that they work on every single day. Take a piece of paper like this. Write the word goals at the top and write down at least 10 goals you want to accomplish in the next 12 months. Now here's the important point. Writing down these goals takes two to three minutes. In fact, it's actually about three if you write down 10 things that you want to accomplish in the next 12 months. Now all you have to do then is take this piece of paper, fold it up, put it away somewhere where you won't see it for a whole year. You'll be happy because not eight of your 10 goals will have been accomplished in the most amazing ways and you'll be sad because you will wish you had written more goals and bigger goals. People come to me and they say, my whole life has changed in the last 30 days. All kinds of things have happened. They've changed jobs, they've changed relationships, they've gotten a new house, they bought a car, they've taken a trip, and these are all things they wrote down. If all you'll do from this day is write down 10 goals and instead of putting them away for a year, just review them on a regular basis, Writing a goal down actually programs it into your subconscious mind. So even if your conscious mind doesn't even remember the list, your subconscious mind's got it. I've spoken all over the world and given this exercise. I've never had anybody say it didn't work. The only things they say are was incredible. The results in their lives were explosive. They could not believe it. Now the third orientation is excellence orientation. In order to achieve something you have never achieved before, you have to be good at something you've never been good at before. You have to develop skills you've never had before. I learned that everybody in the top 10% started where in the bottom 10%. Everybody's at the top and doing well was once at the bottom and doing poorly. Everyone who is now at the front of the buffet line of life was once at the back of the line. Every expert in their field was once not in your field at all. And anything that anyone else has done, you can do as well. The only one who can stop you is you by stopping. So therefore, you find that people who have no advantages at all, but have one thing, they just don't stop. They get to the top 10% and you could be in the top 10%. This is what I learned, which changed my life when I was 24 years old. If you make a decision to get into the top 10% and you don't take it back, you will get there. There's nothing to stop you. The only reason people don't get into the top 10% is that they don't decide to. And if they decide to, they don't get started. And if they get started, they quit. So it's very important. But optimists say, hey, I can be in the top 10%. I can be. And they just never quit. And they just never quit. No, you're sure lucky. No, you won't. You make your own luck. You make your own luck by deciding where you're going and getting on the road. The only way we're going to get to the top 10% is by becoming very good at what we do. There are no shortcuts. We just have to get down and work it out. Just make any decision, be absolutely clear. And then you set your future, your ideal, set the goal to achieve the ideal. Just pay people in your field. You'll go past everybody else in the business. So read on a regular basis. Now the second is to attend all the seminars that you can. Always trade money for time or life. And if it costs you a little bit to go to a seminar, pay the money because you'll get it back 10, 20, 50, 100 times. They're saying, I don't think that this is a good person to invest in. This company has no future. This person has no future. 
The interesting thing is that the more you invest in yourself, the more you believe in yourself, the more you like yourself, the more you like yourself, the more determined you become, the more confident you become, and the better you get.